Hey everybody, it's Romania Black. We are on episode seven of Toilet Bound Hanakakun. I, the last episode gave me everything that I thought I wanted to know about Hanakakun, and I'm still left with more questions. Um, we still don't know the circumstance of his death, which is something that I do want answered, but we do learn a lot about um, Yugi Amane, which is his name when he was a human, when he was alive, and we get a really, really beautiful insight into his life as a human, and it's really tragic. It's so sad that he had all this potential to be a science instructor, and he had all of these this future ahead of him, and due to whatever circumstance, it's been cut short. Um, we had a couple things established. One, he seems to be somebody that constantly gets into fights, that doesn't have a lot of friends, um, that kind of is a loner, and the fifth wonder is sort of his homeroom teacher, but also kind of his caretaker, somebody that really is concerned about him, and that carries on even post-mortem. <laughs> so we get that information. We also get this idea that maybe there's some information that Hanaka-kun doesn't remember or has repressed or is not being told because it seems like he doesn't quite remember a lot from his life as a human. But the fifth wonder does remember his life as a human. So I'm wondering if that is maybe tied to the relic, the Yoshiro, if there's something to do with that. I think it's interesting that the fifth wonder did not want Hanaka-kun to see those memories. He specifically only wanted Yashiro to take the seal off. Whereas with Yako, the fox spirit in the previous episodes, everybody was there. So it didn't really matter who saw those memories. So I'm curious. Um, I've also had people point out, and I have not mentioned it, maybe I have, but I don't think I've mentioned it in previous episodes, um, that our green-haired spectral girl um, is the one on the radio that's telling all the ghostly rumors and stories, and um, Owie is the one that's repeating them, so it's very mysterious. We still don't know her name or why she's tied to this exorcist character. How very interesting. So there's so many questions that the last episode brought up, but I loved The Fifth Wonder. I loved his voice actor. I loved, it was probably one of the most touching episodes we've had so far, that in episode five. And just this realization that Hanaka-kun is slowly gaining emotions and gaining some humanity back, even though he's a ghost, through being with Yashiro and Minamoto. And my my own accent makes me want to say cow, even though it's ko. Every time I'll be like, Minamoto, cow. <laughs> it's really like ko. So... I feel so bad for Ko because we all know it's coming. We all know that Teru's going to get mad that his little brother isn't doing this job of exercising every ghost in the school, you know. And it's it's. I feel like the last couple episodes of this season, Teru's going to be like, well, fine, if you can't do it, I will. And that has me concerned because Minamoto Ko is pretty competent for an eighth grader. Um, for a, a junior high kid, but his brother that's older, that's I think a third year, a second or a third year, um, yeah, I'm sure he's a lot more capable of exercising than his younger brother. So I'm curious where that's going. But I'm so glad you guys are following me on this journey, watching this show. I'm so happy. <laughs> um, but we are going to start episode seven and watch it tonight, and um, I'm excited. So I'm recording this at night. Uh, I've got a couple other things I want to do while I'm recording, but let's just dive right in to episode seven of Toilet Bound Hanaka Kun. And we're going to start our reaction in three, two, one, let's go. Oh my gosh, was that, was that it? Oh my gosh, was that it? Did it cut? Oh, I hate that these are cutting off. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. What was this episode? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. So, a couple things. I love that there's two trios. It's Ko and Yashiro and Hanako. Hanaka-kun. Yugimani. And then there's the green hair girl who we still don't know her name, um, Natsuhiko. And uh, this this other uh, brother of Hanako, the Amani brother. So, which in one of the cards that they showed right before the, the midway point, it said that the Haku was life. I'm assuming Koku is death. So I'm curious now. 
if they're brothers, did maybe Hanako-kun's Hanaka brother kill him or why, as a ghost or what happened? Oh my gosh, this is... More questions. <laughs> it's episode seven. There should not be more mystery, but there is. I love the setup of the, of the two trios. The green hair girl is still extremely intimidating. I like that she's there. There, it's the bathroom and the broadcast room, which is amazing. The bathroom is cleaning up the mess. The broadcast room is spreading all of the mess. So you've got it's they're working against each other, but they're they're it's like a cyclical. It's a cycle. It just keeps going. The, the broadcast room puts out the rumors that lead to the ghosts that are harming, and then the bathroom comes in and cleans it all up. Oh my gosh. I don't like Teru. I do not like Teru, but I'm very happy that we learned in this episode he is not part of the trio. And Natsuhiko is very keen to point out that, that Teru's on to something, and Teru noticed the Yusei working for the green-haired girl. So he's, I, I feel like he's going to maybe come around by the end of the season and realize that Ko may be onto something, that it's not Hana Kokun that's the real threat. It's his brother, this other ghost, that's working with these two. The guy that seems like an exorcist that's kind of turned heel and joined up this green-haired girl. And at this point, I don't know if the green-haired girl's a ghost or if she's like Yashiro and is just a student that has fallen in love with this brother. And maybe when she said in the last episode that Hana Kokun was needy, maybe that's what the brother's been saying. Oh my gosh, guys. I Every episode of this, I think it's going to go some way, and then it, it completely surprises me. And I feel like my jaw was just like, <laughs> like the whole episode. This was so good. Um, wow. Uh, the donut scene, the cooking scene with Ko and Yashiro, I... I'm so torn because on the one hand, I love the idea of Yashiro and Hanako-kun together, but obviously she points out this episode. I'm glad she's pointing this out to us because the audience, we already know, but Hanako-kun's a ghost and he can't not be a ghost. So there's not really, as much as we, the audience, want to see these two together, there's not a realistic future in that. So I like, as much as I'm like Hanako-kun and Yashiro like pairing, I, I like the idea that Ko is a really good person for Yashiro too. Like he's really sweet and kind and he's a good cook apparently. Uh, he's a terrible liar, but he's a good cook. And I love that scene of him helping her and he was trying to help Hanako Kun Ku. So Ko has a really good heart and I love that about him. And I, I think, you know, if, if Yashiro can't end up with Hanako Kun because of obvious problems, <laughs> then, then I could see at the end of the manga, at the end of the series, Ko and her ending up together and I'm I'm okay with that I think this episode I was like no I'm okay with it but I I like that she's acknowledging the problems of her and Hanako Kun's relationship but she still lo likes him as a friend and she wants to help him um it's kind of established I don't think we've talked about in this show the whole idea of exercising being letting the ghost pass on to the next world this is kind of brought up in this episode which makes me wonder if, if that's why way back in episode two Hanako Kun's like, I hope you become a good exorcist because he's like, I eventually would like to pass on. But now that he's with Yashiro and it's clear Hanako Kun likes Yashiro, that that can't be. He really got freaked out when the brother showed up and for a second looked like he was dangerous, which makes me think that something really bad happened between those two. And so I'm curious if we're going to get this season. I hope we do some backstory on that. But. Man, um, I, I had in my head that we've been going on this pattern of episodes two, four, and six have been my favorites so far. It's been like every other episode. And I was like, okay, episode seven's just going to be a, a build up to episode eight. I'm really going to like episode eight. No, th these last two episodes, six and seven, so good. And now it seems like we've cut off. I mean, Moda's stuck with this apparition that's a girl. It turns out that thinks he's just a big pervert that's strung her along, which is hilarious. I want to see what the conclusion of that's going to be. Maybe we get to see what happens when an apparition is exercised next episode. What ends up happening? Just the duality, the two trios against each other is such a great twist. I really thought it was just going to be the green-haired girl and Natsuhiko. Um, but now that we have the revelation that, that, there's a look, that there's potentially Yugi's brother involved. And they look similar. They look exactly the same. Like maybe they're twins. 
I'm curious why the fifth wonder didn't mention it, but maybe that's going to come up. So, oh guys, this episode was so good. <laughs> so, so good. I, I'm excited. I, I, I get excited every week for the next episode. I hope you all are too. Please feel free to comment down below. Um, man, just, this is so much fun. I love the show. So thank you guys so much. I hope you all have a great week. Feel free to comment down below, like, subscribe, all that. But thank you guys so much. I hope you all have a great week. Stay safe. And I will be back next week with more Toilet Bound Hanako-kun. Bye. <laughs>